All right. We tie in the uh, purple and tan crab slash tarpon toad. It's more like a weighted tarpon toad. I'm tying it on a Gamagatsu um, SL12S in size 2. I'm using the tan 210 flat wax thread. And um, it might take me a little longer to tie in the video. I haven't gotten all my materials ready yet. And I'm sure at some point I'll have to get up and address the dogs. So the first thing I tie on is um, some temple fox. Um, I like to find a little section that's uh, a little shorter and kind of wispier. Sort of like that. And uh, maybe you just use the size of like a, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a pencil or half a pencil, something like that. Maybe about like I'll try to share some of the tips that make it easier for me to tie crab flies. Uh, but basically, for this part, all you want to do is take out the under fluff where you're going to be tying it onto the hook so you don't have too much bulk. And then I like to take some of the longer fibers out to make it a little shorter and wispier, kind of like this. I go ahead and tie that in maybe a one and a half times the shank of the hook and I'm trying to be too precise with this most of it gets covered up just kind of want it to stick straight out the back of the hook and cut off the extra Okay, take it back to about just past the barber or the point of the hook rather. Next thing I tie in is some of this uh, sparkle hair and I'm using purple uh, sparkle hair to kind of match the tail. Uh, I just found out about this stuff, I got it from Orvis and I love it. It ties in really well with, uh, with these tails like this temple fox or or uh, just regular right arctic fox tails and it looks really, it adds a lot of flash so I get just a little a little bunch of it kind of like that, just really depends on how much uh, how much flash you want and the way I tie this in is I just do it on one side first, I kind of match the length of the um, temple fox Tie it in loosely on one side, and then just pull it over to the other side. Kind of make sure it's good and spread out, and then tighten it down. And then I like to build up a little ramp here because I'm going to tie that marabou collar in, and that marabou tends to like. To sit on this ramp a little better than on the back side of a uh, like a like a bump. So uh, that looks good. I don't try to get this too exact. I mean, redfish are not picky eaters. So that's basically the tail of the fly. So then I'll move to this um, tan medium marabou. I love marabou, I just started tying with it, and it's like my favorite material to tie with now. Because it's just crazy supple. But also, it, um, I don't know, I don't find it, so far the flies that I've fished with it don't seem like they have any durability issues, which was what I thought was the downfall of, uh, of tying with marabou to begin with, but I don't know, they, they seem to hold together pretty well, so what I'm going to do is just kind of get just like a nice little patch of it sort of like this um, kind of just depends sometimes you'll get some with little wispier ends I mean um, longer ends 
and you kind of got to break those off to make sure you get a nice fluffy section that's consistent all the way around the fly. So, and this would go a lot quicker if I actually had stuff ready, but I do not. So this is how it is. So I just kind of ball it up and to figure out the length that I want the collar. And I typically try to go half to three quarter length of the tail itself. And the way I do this is I just set it down right on top kind of use my fingers to spread it all around and then give it a couple wraps and look to make sure that it's got good even coverage which it looks like it does and I will slip off the front just like that try to get some of the excess off I really like this color combination um, of tan and purple. Admittedly, I've not fished this fly yet, but I cannot see it having any issues with the fish here. So, all right. So next, bring the thread all the way up to the front. We're gonna tie some eyes. I like to go maybe a quarter of the way down the shank of the hook to start the eyes because it always ends up pulling it forward a little bit. And this collar kind of stops almost right at the point of the hook, um, maybe a little behind it. I actually probably could have come a little further down. I'd like this little taper to be a little less. just makes the body underneath the EP look a little more um, uniform. And I dropped a set of eyes on the ground. But I'm using these small red pre-painted dumbbell eyes. And just go ahead and tie those in, however you like to tie in the eyes. Typically, I just kind of get them situated. Lock them in just a little bit. And I hit them with a little bit of hard head or something. Just, just enough to kind of hold it in place, not much. This is Loon Hardhead. You can use whatever you want. Uh, Zappa Gap. I have some Zappa Gap, but the bottom has sealed itself shut, so I'm not using that. And then just tie it in real good. You know. yeah. Just however you like to do it. Make sure you lock them in pretty good. All right, and then sometimes if the taper is a little tall, I'll put a, some extra thread right in here just to make the body look a little more uniform. But I typically don't waste too much time on that. So bring it back to the collar. I'll flip the fly over. And uh, I use one of these small hair clips. Um, my wife had them lying around and these are magnificent for holding back material while you're tying in your EP. It's a game changer. So I just kind of grab all this fiber, just keep it out of the way. And now I'm going to get my tan and purple EP. We're going to rotate back and forth between tan and purple. Um, what I typically do is get off a pretty small strip of it and go smaller than you think you need to. That's that's what I typically find. Go smaller than you think you need to because uh, this stuff ends up being a lot. I don't even know how to quantify it. I mean maybe when you compress it maybe like twice the diameter of the, uh, the hook shank, like the roundness of the hook shank. No. All right. So I'm just going to cut a little section of the tan off and uh, put that over to the side. And I'll do the same thing for the purple. Try to match the thicknesses. Again, not a big deal if you don't. 
Redfish don't care, it just makes the fly look prettier. Alright, now, I love tying crabs, but sometimes it can be kind of a pain. So the way I like to do it is I like to leave the whole um, strand of EP together. And I'll kind of lay it on the top and do one loose X wrap on the top. And then just set it down and take this, bring both ends up, and that kind of tightens up the X wrap in the middle. Move it to where you want it. Then pull down on the thread to tighten. And you're going to make two more X wraps. So keep it tight. Do one and two. Then I pull them back and I do two wraps right in front. And then I snip off um, just what I want on the hook. So I'll set that down. I'll move my clip to capture the EP that I just tied in, and I'll get the tan. Now, when I was first starting to tie crab flies, I could not for the life of me get the EP tight up against itself. Um, but this is what I found out you had to do. So, take the EP, do just like you did on the first one, pick it up, kind of get that X wrap tight in the middle, then move it, just move it. Just push it straight back to the back against the first wrap and hold it there. If you need to, you can put another wrap around it right here to hold it in place. Um, I don't find you always need to do that, but then you, that's how you get it tight. And then just do the same thing. So one tight X wrap, another tight X wrap, hold it back, two wraps, snip. And that's basically what you're going to do the whole way forward. And with this little um, hair clip, it makes life so much easier. It just keeps the EP from getting caught in each wrap and um, makes life super easy. So I used two wraps to hold the EP in place the previous time, but what I typically end up doing is when I go to put the next piece in, I'll open up one of those wraps and lay it down. And I just find that it keeps um, keeps the EP right in place without building up too much of a ramp on the front side of the EP and pushing it forward. So like I was saying before, you just move it to where you want it. Two tight X wraps. I've seen people do three wraps at a time and then fold over the EP, but I just find it doesn't come out as clean at the end. So um, this is the way I like to do it, but by all means, if you find a way that you like to do it better, I'm just sharing this because I've learned a couple tips that make it easier on me and I thought others might want to hear them. So again, I'm just going to keep um, going back and forth between the purple and the tan. Move the EP back. Tie it in to hold it in place. Or a couple wraps in front rather. And a couple X wraps. And when you do this enough, you can work through it pretty fast. I've been kind of dedicating myself to tying crab flies lately. First off, because the redfish eat crab flies like crazy. And also because I kind of thought that they were the most challenging to tie at the beginning. And I just wanted to work at it until I thought that I was proficient. And I would say uh, that now I would consider myself to be fairly proficient at tying. Uh, crab flies, so it's a. Uh, and I, I tie these crab flies a little big when I go into uh, like Orvis or um, look at other other folks' flies. Theirs tend to be a little smaller. Um, but I guess I'm coming from fishing three, four inch swim baits into the fly world where flies. Like a number four crab flies is like T tiny or numbers, especially like number number six crab flies and stuff like that. But I tie this on our number two, and I like to leave it a fairly large profile. It's not very, it's not hard to throw. And uh, the ones I have tied and thrown, the redfish seem to like. So uh, normally, after about the sixth section, um, I've filled up the majority of the rest of the hook shank with EP. You can just stack it in on front if you want. 
but once I've reached the eyes, I kind of call it good. And then I move my thread to the front of the eyes. And I'll go ahead and use my clip to capture all of the hair. And I'm going to tie in a weed guard. So I like to use the straight weed guard that I learned how to tie in from Nick at 239 Flies. Well, from watching his videos rather. Um, learned a lot of stuff from that guy actually. He ties some awesome flies. Wish I could tie the way he does, but maybe one day. Uh, let's see. So I'll just take a little piece of 30 or 40 pound Mason's Hard Mono, crimp the end of it. Alright, I am so bad at filming that not only has the video stopped twice, but I actually ran out of memory on the card and had to get up and go delete uh, pictures and videos. So, where we are now, as I'm sure you didn't even notice, was uh, I just tied in the weed guard, did a few wraps behind, I'm going to trim it just past the point of the hook, and I'm going to whip finish behind the weed guard. I just do four. Um, and that is always plenty. Alright, and that is the tie. So now we get into the part that I always manage to screw up. And that's the trimming. So, go ahead and take the um, clip off. And I am going to attempt to trim. So, what I typically do, sometimes I'll pull them all together and hold them up on top and trim around them so they end up about the same height, but then I always end up displeased with my ability um, to do it that way. So normally what I do is just use my bobbin or scissors or something to kind of separate the hair from the marabou. Sometimes the marabou wants to stick in with the uh, EP. We don't want to trim the marabou. So I'll just grab one side and I try to pull it straight out and kind of flatten the EP as best I can. And then make sure you're pulling it parallel to the eyes. So that's another mistake I make sometimes is I'll pull it kind of up or, or, uh, or down. And then I'll trim the other one and they're way off and I try to correct it. And when just in trying to correct it, I cut too much off and it looks like garbage. Truthfully, in the water, it all looks about the same. But typically what I do is uh, I'll start with the cut almost at the eyes on this side, angle outwards, and then turn up parallel with the fly. And then when you let go of it, it'll actually round out pretty nicely and, um, and give you a good crab body look there. And then I'm going to try to do it on the other side. Actually, uh, I'm fairly pleased with the way that side came out, so I can almost guarantee you that this side is not going to come out anywhere near like it. It's just the game. It's, that's EP crab trimming for you. So I'm going to do the same thing. Separate out the marabou. Make sure none's underneath. And you can use that clip to pin back the marabou at this stage, I just find that it kind of gets in the way when you go to trim, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the other side, and yeah, I trimmed that side much smaller than the other, so now i got to try to correct it, and here's where I always mess up. So, here we go. This is like the biggest no-no in fly tying, is over trimming this EP. Well, but that actually isn't a bad job, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. And I'm actually fairly pleased with how that came out. So, let's see, let me clean up all these little scragglers. And I hope you got steadier hands than I do. I try to drink my parish beer. Drink local when you're tying for local. Steady my hands a little bit, but it doesn't seem to want to work today. Alright, and that's that's basically the finished uh finished 
crab there or toad. It's really like I was saying. It's it's pretty much a, tar a weighted tarpon toad. Um, but uh, I really enjoy tying this pattern, and I think it looks really good. And I think the the fish are really gonna like it. I have not again. I have not thrown it yet, but um, I have thrown flies similar to this, and the redfish like the flies, and I'm sure they'll like the color. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of UV loon um, thin on here. Make sure I cover all the threads. Let it sink in for just a second. Hit it with the light. Help uh, harden it up. same thing. Make sure you cover the exposed threads. It doesn't have to be UV resin. Um, I also use Loon Hardhead and I also use Sally Henson Hard as Nails so uh, all those seem to work just fine. I wouldn't get too picky on what hardening agent you use. These flies uh, seem to be pretty durable. Uh, me and a buddy, Eric Ditch from Team Getting Skinny, shout out. Um, we fished a, a very similar style to this in the video that we made, the collaboration video we made before the Hope Del Tito's Delacro. I mean, the uh, Hope Del Tito's that we fished in Delacro. And we ended up catching seven reds on it that day. And one of the eyes broke off, but those were, I was using presentation eyes that uh, I probably won't use again. These painted lead eyes seem to be a little more durable. But that's it. So, um, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Whether or not you use it is up to you. When this thing gets wet, it really slicks up. Um, and it also has a fair bit of shine to it. And it, uh. So, there you go. Hope you enjoy it.